Apple just released iOS 16.5 beta 2 for registered developers about two weeks after the release of beta 1. And this will be out for public beta testers very soon. Now, along with this iOS update, Apple also released the second beta for iPadOS 16.5, macOS 13.4, watchOS 9.5, tvOS 16.5, and HomePodOS 16.5. But of course, this video is all about iOS 16.5 beta 2. So taking a look at the size of this update, we can see it comes in just over 600 megabytes coming from beta 1. If you're coming from a previous version like 16.4.1 or earlier, it will probably be multiple gigabytes. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update. So if you go into our settings, general about, 16.5, we can see that new build number is 20F5039E. So we do still have an E at the end of the build number, which indicates we still have a few betas to go before the final release as expected. Now, I did wanna point out also that we do have a new modem firmware update. So it's now 1.70.01. .01. It was 1.70.00 on beta one. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.5 beta two? And the first First thing I want to address is a question I've been asked multiple times, and that is, are the actively exploited bugs that have been patched in 16.4.1, are they going to be patched in this second beta of 16.5? So essentially, are we going to get the same security updates that we saw in 16.4.1 last week here in beta 2? And I would say most likely. I do think that we are protected if we go ahead and update to iOS 16.5 beta 2. And if for whatever reason those bugs are not patched in beta 2, they will most definitely be patched in beta 3, which should come next week. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But I think that you are safe if you go ahead and update to the second developer beta of 16.5. So remember how one of the biggest features in beta 1 was that you can now screen record with just your voice using Siri well that appears to not work anymore in beta 2 I'm not sure why I've tried multiple ways of saying it but it seems like it just simply does not work anymore so watch this screen record it's gonna think and it says one moment before it didn't even do that figured as much okay that's even worse screen record so you can see it just pulls up like results from Safari and I've tried multiple different ways of saying that in beta 1 all I had to do was say screen record and it worked every single time it would record my screen and I would be able to stop it with just saying stop screen recording and not have to actually go into the control center or anything but that appears to not be working anymore in beta 2 so I'm not sure if that was accidentally put into beta one or if Apple is just trying to fix it up because it was pretty buggy. Like when you would screen record, it wouldn't show in the control center that you were actually screen recording and the animation was a little bit buggy. So Apple may have just pulled it and they're going to put it back in beta three so they can fix some things behind the scenes. I'm not sure it's a beta, so I don't know why they would do that. But for whatever reason, that screen recording via Siri is gone in beta two. Now, something else new in 16.5 is the sports tab inside of the news application. So if you go into that, you will notice that we have a menu up here in the top left. And I noticed in beta two, this may have been there in beta one as well, but the menu here dynamically changes based on your favorites and also based on what's popular at the moment. Like before, when I recorded that beta one video, men's college basketball and March Madness were all the way up at the top, even over my favorites. So it seems to change based on what's popular at the moment, which is pretty nice. And this whole sports section and the news application is actually pretty nice. Now, I don't think it's as good as Bleacher Report or ESPN. I mentioned earlier how I did like the layout a little bit better, but I've since, you know, after I've been using it for a while now, I definitely do not think it's near as good as those applications, mainly because when I go into a game like this one, for example, which has ended, if I go into it, I cannot see anything. I cannot see a box score. At least it's not very clear from the beginning. I cannot see any type of box score. I can't see who scored what. Like if I tap on these three games, there are these three dots right there. You know, all I can do is follow team, block team, and go to team. I can't really do anything else. I can watch an Apple TV, but but that doesn't really help me out here when I just want to see a box score. So I would like to see this updated with more features because right now it just seems like a, a kind of a plug for the TV application. Like it just seems like it's only here so you can find your teams and watch them in Apple TV. I really don't see any other benefit besides just, you know, notable news 
from that team, which you can get in many other applications. But speaking of the TV application, there was code found in iOS 16.5 beta 1 that suggested Apple is working on a new quad box picture in picture feature for the TV app. So it's going to be nice for sporting events where you can watch four different games at one time. So I've not been able to access this. You know, I've not been able to see this on my Apple TV or in the TV application, but apparently that is coming. Now, Apple did also release a new firmware update for the AirPods, AirPods Pro and AirPods AirPods Max. So this new version number is 5E133. And you can see that the previous version number was 5B58. So it might have not updated just yet, but they will be updating very soon. And Apple has not released any type of release notes or anything that's new in this update. But if anything does come out, if I find anything new, I will likely be making a separate video for that AirPods update. I did also want to mention that if you have an Apple Watch, there are two new activity challenges coming up. So on April 26th, second we're going to have an earth day challenge and then on april 29th there's going to be an international dance day challenge and to get that earth day award on april 22nd you're going to have to work out for 30 minutes or more and then the next weekend the next saturday on april 29th for International Dance Day, you have to work out for 20 minutes or more. And if you have an Apple Watch, you will get notifications for these activity challenges before they kick off. Just make sure to keep it locked to the fitness application as well if you don't get that notification. And just a quick note, if you install the new Mac OS beta today, you might have noticed that you now have the option to change how you install the beta software just like we have on iOS. So that never made its way to Mac OS until now. So now you're gonna be able to go into there and select if you want developer or public beta, and you could also change the email associated with your developer accounts. And just like on iOS, the big benefit for this is that you're no longer going to need a profile. You're not going to have to install a profile on your Mac to receive a beta update, at least if you have the developer beta. And taking a look at the release notes, you can see that every known issue that was in the beta one release notes has now been resolved with beta two. So the new feature is the same. A shared administrator in a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. But now instead of showing known issues, every issue that was listed before related to matter accessories has been resolved. So that is great news if you are using, you know, matter smart home accessories. Now, something I've been having issues with ever since I installed 16.5 beta one is the universal clipboard. So when I copy and paste something from my Mac to my iPhone or vice versa, it just seems to not work as well after installing 16.5. Now I've seen people say this is an issue on 16.4.1 as well but I've not had that issue on my device on 16.4.1, my main device, but I am having it here on 16.5. So if you guys have issues with Universal Clipboard like I do, please let me know in a comment down below. I wanna see if I am alone here or if this has actually been fixed in 16.5 for you guys. But something I know has not been fixed is select all in Safari. So if you go into Safari and you select something, you can see there is no way to select all on a web page anymore. So before you could easily go into the, you know, little copy and paste menu right here and select everything on a web page, but you can no longer do that from that menu or from the share sheets. Now, something else that has not been fixed is the notification lag. So you can see here, if I go up on my notifications, you can see the notification center there has some lag to it when I pull it up like so. So you can see the lag that happens every single time. It happens on 16.4.1 as well. So that has still not been fixed here in this second beta. Now, as far as the performance and battery life goes, I am running a quick Geekbench 6 test. I'm not expecting any major changes from beta 1 to beta 2. Since we are pretty deep into the iOS 16 release cycle, you don't generally see very big you know, swings in performance going from one beta to another. But nonetheless, we are going to take a look at the score real quick. All right, so we scored a 25-20 on the single core and a 63-67 on the multi-core. So the single core was just slightly higher by three points and the multi-core was slightly higher by about 12 points. So as expected, a very minor difference and I would expect pretty much no change in day-to-day -day usage. And for battery life, I would expect pretty much the same thing that we just said with performance. Not really a big change from beta one to beta two, which to me, beta one had pretty much the same battery life as 16.4 and 16.4.1. So even if you're on those versions and you think that you may update to get better battery life, I highly doubt it. I think 16.5 beta two has pretty much the same 
same battery life. If it's any different, it would probably be a little bit worse since it is technically a beta compared to a final release. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is most likely going to be iOS 16.5 beta 3. So I think that we should see that next week right there on the 18th. So Apple does usually go two weeks between betas one and beta two. And then after beta two, we usually switch over to a one week release schedule. So I would expect to switch back to a one weeker <laughs> starting next week. So we should see beta three and then we should see that final release of 16.5 at some point in May. Now I've had a few questions from you guys asking if we're going to see a 16.4.2 and I addressed this in a previous video, but I'll say it again. It's hard to say at this point. I, I do not work with an Apple. I don't have any type of inside information about that yet. You know, I may later on, but right now I don't have any type of information on a 16.4.2. Point two. So it's all up to Apple and if they're going to patch up like some type of exploit that may have been actively exploited out in the wild. If they find something like that, then they'll probably push out a 16.4.2. But if not, we're probably just going to wait until 16.5 in May. But you guys already know the drill. Just keep it locked to my Twitter and my newsletter, which is linked down in the description below, and you'll keep up to date with pretty much everything. You won't need to wonder about when an iOS update is coming. But anyways, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS update videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.